Hi guys, so this is my 1998 Mark V Ford Transit. It's got the 2.5 litre non turbo DI engine in it, uh, the legendary banana engine as it's also known. Um, this is a short video to show you how to blank off the EGR valve, and hopefully, I'll try and explain what the EGR valve is and why I'm blanking it off. So, here we have it. This is why they call it the banana engine because it looks like it's got a bunch of bananas sitting on top of it this is the inlet manifold shaped as a bunch of bananas cool design so here we have the exhaust gas recirculation valve or EGR valve as it's commonly known what does it do well it's used to reduce the nitrogen oxide gases emitted from the exhaust during combustion and it's used in both petrol and diesel vehicles um, what it, how it works is it works by reintroducing the exhaust gases from the exhaust manifold down here back up this pipe and into the inlet manifold and this is controlled by a butterfly valve here and it uses a venturi effect to draw it up from the exhaust in modern engines this is all well and good because you have a much cleaner combustion it's all controlled by the ECU and you get much cleaner gases entering the inlet manifold so it doesn't get so blocked but with an older style engine like this it's not ECU controlled it's purely mechanical from this butterfly valve here and you get lots of diesel deposits coming back up and blocking the inlet manifold and in effect you're reducing the amount of airflow going into the inlet into the engine therefore reducing the performance. A very simple modification you can do is to put an EGR valve blanking plate in between this pipe here and the inlet manifold. There are various places you can put that. Um, here I have the blanking plate, <clears throat> stainless steel one. Um, you can either put it here but the problem is with installing it here is that these bolts here are very rusty and I know as soon as I try and un undo these they're going to shear off so I'm not going to opt to that one or here which looks like a much better place for me to install it it's very simple to install the blanking plate all you've got to do is undo these two Torx bolts here it's a T40 torques bit so I'm just gonna undo these and one in the other side now this has already got a blanking plate in it but I didn't realize so I ordered a new one um, opted for a stainless steel one this time it was only four pounds so might as well replace it anyway just be careful it doesn't drop down This is the old one. As you can see, it's very rusted. It's actually got holes in it, which isn't good. It's very rusty. So, yeah, stainless steel one will be good. Torch behind it. You can see the light coming through the holes. <laughs> Simply get the new plate and insert it in between this pipe and the valve and put the torx bit back in the torx bolt sorry don't over tighten it just um just nip it up lovely As you can see, the new plate just sits in between here. Now my van had been running <coughs> without making any modifications to this butterfly valve here. Um, it already had a blanking plate in. Uh, hadn't, somebody hadn't made any adjustments to this butterfly valve, but um, I've read in lots of forums that 
is a good idea to wedge this open somehow or remove the butterfly valve. So I wouldn't I don't really think I want to remove it. Um but I'm going to maybe wedge it in the open position and we'll see what effect that has. So if I just take this air hose off we can see what's going on inside. So here we have the butterfly valve which is controlled by this linkage here connected to the fuel pump. Lots of people just remove this linkage and take the valve out, the, um, the butterfly valve out completely. Um, I'm going to leave it in and just fix it in the open position somehow um, and try and work out the best way of doing that. As you can see it's really sooty in there, it's really coked up so I might have to clean that as well at a later date but I'll just show you how I'm going to wedge this open. Now some people have suggested using cable ties to hold it open. Um, I'm not too sure because this is going to get hot here. Um, where to wrap it around, maybe I could tie it around the valve itself to hold it there, that might work. It needs to be in that position, a fully open position. So let's try a cable tie first, see how that works. That can sit there. want it to sit in that position. Perfect. You can slightly adjust that. There we go. Well, that's not going anywhere. As you can see that's now in the open position and I've just cable tied it around here. This doesn't get hot anyway because this is on the inlet. Um, I'll just trim this cable tie up. There. And, there. and with this with this modification it's easily reversible. And like I say, I had this on my van previously anyway. It didn't have the valve open, but it passed the MOT, no problem. And I could just put this intake pipe back on and there we have it drawbacks or downsides to installing the EGR blanket plate, I'd say that it makes the engine slightly more noisy, uh, just because you've opened that flap and it just makes it a bit more grunty. It's not really a problem in a van like this because it's loud anyway. Also you've got the increased nitrogen oxide gases emitted out of the exhaust pipe. Thank you for watching, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful in some, some way. Uh, please like and subscribe my page, thank you.